The ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerves are easily blocked in the lower abdomen and can be a simple and effective method for managing pain following inguinal hernia repair and other related procedures. In this video, we'll discuss the anatomy, sonoanatomy, indications, and technique for blocking these nerves, as well as offer some tips for success. The ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerves are derived from the lumbar plexus, and while the classic description has them originating from the L1 nerve root, plus or minus T12, they do have a variable derivation from as high as T11 down to L3. Both nerves cross in front of the quadratus lumborum muscle and wend their way around the abdominal wall in the transversus abdominis plane before piercing the internal and external oblique to innervate the skin and soft tissues of the suprapubic region, in the case of the iliohypogastric, or the inguinal region. Thank you, ilioinguinal. The iliohypogastric has a lateral branch that splits off early to innervate the skin over the gluteal muscles on the posterior lateral thigh. When we think of the abdominal wall in the course of the nerves, this figure often comes to mind, with the spinal nerve traveling in the tap plane, giving off a lateral cutaneous branch, and then continuing on as the anterior cutaneous nerve to supply the midline. This is true for the spinal nerves of T7 through T12. The L1 nerve, or the named branches that we're talking about here, take a slightly different course. Starting in the tap plane, they pierce first the internal, then external oblique without entering the rectus muscle. Because of this, we sometimes image the nerves in the plane between internal and transversus or between the two oblique muscles, depending on the anatomical variation and the proposition. Here's the sensory distribution you can expect with blockade of these two nerves. The iliohypogastric nerve innervates the lower abdomen below the subcostal nerve, as well as the skin and the posterior lateral thigh. The ilioinguinal nerve supplies the skin and soft tissues over the inguinal ligament, down to the pubis, as well as a portion of the proximal medial thigh and a portion of the scrotum and labia majora. There are small branches that innervate the pubic symphysis from both nerves. These blocks are useful adjuncts following inguinal hernia repair and other procedures on the inguinal region. They're also useful for surgery involving the scrotum, such as orchiopexy and resection of hydrocele or varicocele. There are some data showing that a Fannin steel incision is covered by blockade of these nerves, but this is inconsistent and a tap block is likely a better plan. A linear probe is placed on the lower abdomen immediately medial to the anterior superior iliac spine. In order to get the best view of the nerves, vessels, and muscular planes, the probe is rotated slightly so it's parallel to a line connecting the ASIS with the umbilicus. This is a fairly shallow and simple block, and the needle can be advanced in plane from either the lateral or medial side, or brought down out of plane into the correct fascial plane. Here's what we see on the ultrasound image. The ASIS is lateral, casting a large shadow. We see here the internal oblique and transversus muscles, with peritoneum below. The ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerves appear as hypoechoic circles within the intermuscular plane. Note that not all that is dark and circular is a nerve. There are vessels that travel with the nerves as well, and it's worthwhile putting on the color Doppler function to verify their position. Regardless, the goal of this block is to place local anesthetic in this plane and peel apart the muscles. Here we see the internal oblique, transversus, and the ASIS on the lateral side. You can see the nerves and vessels appearing like three peas in a pod. In this instance, we're going to bring the needle in plane from medial to lateral. The needle passes through the muscles and approaches the fascial plane beside the neurovascular structures. A test injection shows the tip is still in the internal oblique. We need to go one more click. Ah, there we go. Now we see the local immediately next to the nerves pushing up the internal oblique muscle. You can see how 10 mil spreads easily to cover all the possible anatomic variations within that plane. And here are some ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerve block tips. First, this is not a high volume block. 10 mils is often enough in adults, and we rarely go beyond 15. This is a bread and butter technique for pediatrics, and the dosing there is 0.15 mils per kilo. Next, in individuals with challenging belly contours, it's often helpful to start scanning at the tap position above the ASIS, identify the three muscles, and then slide medially and inferiorly until the target nerves come into view. Here we see the three tap muscles. As we slide, the nerves become quite obvious, and more importantly, it's clear which muscle layers are which. And finally, be careful about going too deep. The iliacus muscle lies just below and lateral. 
and an injection of local anesthetic in the plane between this muscle and transversus can result in a femoral nerve block. You lose style points when you have to send your inguinal hernia patient home with a knee immobilizer, so take care to identify those layers.